Live from the Bosconi Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at AWS Summit 2015. Okay, welcome back everyone. You are watching theCUBE Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier. We are here live in uh, Moscone North in San Francisco for Amazon Web Services Summit. My co-host, Mark Farley here, uh, author, blogger, uh, cloud expert, storage expert, uh, and we're getting all the action for Amazon Web Services. Man, they're just rolling out a lot of stuff, more and more cloud goodness. Big, big emphasis on the enterprise, and uh, we're going to break it down for you. Our next guest is Phil Brotherton, VP of Cloud uh, Solutions with NetApp. Um, welcome back to theCUBE. Hey thanks. Now. Good, good yeah, to see thanks you. For hey having now. It's good to be here, John. <laughs> uh, Phil, so NetApp obviously is in the, is in the storage business. Uh, Amazon launching the Elastic File System, yep. that's what they call it. Um, customers are moving to the cloud, hybrid is a big part of that conversation. Um, you guys are right in the, right in the mid middle of all the action. So, yeah. as someone who's innovating, I mean, you're, you're a classic case of innovator's dilemma, but happening in a good way. NetApp is ex executing their base business, but yet investing in the cloud. And totally. Tom George has told me straight up in an interview once, hey, you know what, our customers are asking for it, we go where our customers go, and that's Amazon, that's cloud. So, talk about that bridge. You guys are now intersecting essentially what Amazon's talking about. Totally, totally. I mean, what we saw, we've just continued to see, and what Tom would have been talking to you about, is our customers are doing a lot of work on-prem, they're doing a lot of work on the cloud. And Amazon's the big kahuna of the cloud, no question. And so, we've been working on a number of projects to basically, I like the Southwest Airlines, set, you know, set yourself free, that's what we're trying to set the data free, basically, make it available, you use it where you need to use it. And um, sometimes that's literally on the cloud, full on at a you know, dollar fifty an hour type thing. Sometimes it's, we do a lot of uh, systems near the cloud where we connect to EC2. Um, we use them a lot for backup and archiving. So our, our family of products has gotten bigger and bigger uh, connected to Amazon. And you know, when we go back to our customers, it's all about the enterprise guys want to be able to take advantage of what, like Andy Jassy talks about, the innovation capabilities and what is the story? Yeah. What is the NetApp story in the cloud with Amazon specifically? Is there a specific point product? Is it a platform? No, no, it's is it a sort solution? Of a, we talk about a data fabric. So what we think is happening, and it's absolutely going to happen, is you get more software defined in storage. And so it's more about data management than storage when you get right down to it. And then you look and you say, an enterprise has to manage their data across their cloud. And their cloud has some on-prem and it has a lot of, of Amazon, a lot of off-prem. And you're going to need to be able to move and manage your data kind of in the notion of a fabric. And we're doing things now, we've got the product portfolio basically set now that does the right pieces of the movement. We have a little more work to do on our formats and um, our fabric is in place and we just start adding yeah. services on top. So, we bank the company on this direction, man. It is where you know, Tom and the rest of us are going. Yeah, you're banking on it. Uh, a lot of people, other people are as well. They see the cloud. I see VMware's moving really fast to try to have something there. Uh, they talk about software defined others. Um, what is the what is the the areas you guys work? I see block and and um, object. You saw that today on stage. But Amazon's got this Lego block philosophy. It's almost like web services in the ten years ago kind of playing out. So. Yeah. What is your fabric's capability? Is it monolithic? Is it plug and play? Yeah, is it, it Lego block like? I mean, help dissect that out with us. I mean, you've known you've known NetApp for a long yeah. time, and it's not that different than what we've been doing for a long time in the on-prem. Just in the on-prem world, is it's always been important from a data point of view that you can support, give people a lot of flexibility on the operating systems they work on. Then it was the virtualization platforms, various protocols. Those things are all flexibility to getting your data where you want it. Yeah. That's, you know, this is what uh, ONTAP does for you. Extending that to the clouds is where we're going. So we want people to be able to use the cloud they want to use, have choice of clouds, have choice of on-prem, and you really have to have a lot of data. If you, you kind of think where the world's going, most enterprises are going to manage applications and data, and that's about it. The infrastructure is increasingly 
standardized and commoditized, commodity. So this data fabric is how do I get control and, and the choices that I need. Mostly what I see going on is um, in the industry, I think it's a little, this is the innovator's dilemma comment, uh, con concept is, I think when things are being changed as much as they are now in our industry, you have to look at customers. You don't try to defend your shrinking iceberg or any of those ideas. And so we've been focusing on our customers going, they want choice of clouds, they want to be able to run on off how they want, give them those choices. Everybody else is kind of in the use my point solution and, yeah. it, and it really doesn't look that customer friendly to us. So we're trying to really keep go to the customer. So how does this thinking of how does this thinking making the business model of NetApp uh, change over time, right? Because cloud stuff tends to be services more than products. Uh, so yep. if you're, if you're yep. looking at doing, um, if you're looking at uh, satisfying customers that want to do more in the cloud, are you, are you developing services? Are there services Absolutely. that you got? Can you, can you talk about that some? Yeah, the, um, I'll give you an example, probably the, uh, biggest example is Cloud ONTAP. This product, we launched Cloud ONTAP uh, last November, and if you think about the history of NetApp, it's actually a lot like what Amazon just announced today in their um, Elastic file service. 20 years ago, we came out with an appliance that was $35,000, NFS only. You could plug it in, have it running in 30 minutes, and um, I mean, John, you know, you know some of these guys, Rob Salmon and the guys who used to sell yeah. boxes out of their Jettas would go in and drop one off, and ask five questions, and that was the state of the art 20 years ago, and a lot of that was the... Well, Pure Storage is playing that card right now. They're coming in with that same strategy. Um, the box, some people are liking the box approach. It, it, it's, the problem is that was good 20 years ago, but now we're talking hybrid cloud worlds and all those yeah, types yeah. of things, so it... it, it yeah, density, it's, data it's a, center's gotten smaller. I mean, trying to... Trying to, to get to your back to your, to trying to cram hardware into data centers where guys are trying to shrink their data centers is a very, you might get a couple, I can see where you get 100 million or something in revenue, but it's going to be pretty hard to get any real trajectory out of that kind of projects these days. So what we see going on is, is people are moving to more towards, we always call it consumption models mm -hmm. as opposed to buying you know, big multi-million dollar capital purchases. We put Cloud on tap. Cloud on tap costs a, a, a dollar fifty an hour a commit. So what used to be thirty five thousand dollars to get started twenty years ago, is a dollar fifty commit plus about another three dollars of EBS and EC two time. So four fifty an hour, and you can try and run all the features of on tap we've built over the last twenty years, and. You know, that's really just a stepping stone in the direction you're talking about. We expect to see more consumption pricing. I think you look at companies like Adobe that have been going through this longer than we have. Those are big changes that are are coming for um, a lot of companies. And we're trying to go into this very aggressively. Again, basically because customers are asking for it. It doesn't make sense to change just for the sake of change. Phil, talk about the customer out there. Share with the folks that are watching, um, that are trying to understand the breakdown of what the cloud means. Um, from a NetApp perspective, obviously you have a solutions, you have a market, you have a lot of existing customers, install base, like others, like EMC and others. But share your view on, what, is it, what does this Amazon trend mean for the customer? And as they try to modernize, get in, agile, yeah. Get nimble. What are they? What what should be they looking at? What's the noise? Where's the signal? Where's the meat on the bone? I mean, share share from your perspective. How should they be looking at this right now? This whole cloud migration, this hybrid cloud yeah. shift from a storage perspective. I mean, you know, I'm becoming like an. I'll tell you an old warrior story. I'm becoming like an old warrior in high tech. I think I've been doing it literally. <laughs> I'm not just making it up. I've been doing it 25 years now, and we've been talking about, you know, saving money and agility, you know for 25 years, the marketing. Storage vector. efficiency. If you go to the Computer History Museum, you'll see that I, I didn't start this either. It, it goes back long, long before I joined the industry. And and it's like, and you look at it and you're like, okay, really, did we? I mean, we're, you know, er, I think every big enterprise is still trying to figure out how to use IT faster and to more business benefit. And most companies don't want to run IT. It's not their core business. And I think Andy, I, I really believe Andy Jassy, when Andy Jassy stands, stands up and says um, innovation is what the cloud's about, I really agree with him. Yeah. Is the ability to try and fail fast, 
which the startups do naturally and the yeah. big companies need to do more, is really the fundamental change of the cloud, is what the cloud is enabling that's so important to all of us. So I want to put a quote I put from Jassy and I, that I put down on the crowd chat. Go to crowdchat.net slash AWS Summit for my live tweets from the keynote and get your thoughts on Phil on this. Uh, he said, and I'm uh, paraphrasing, but I'm, the quote is here, but he was kind of talking about like why they're winning. That's my words, not his. Um, three things, quicker to build, easier to adapt and update, and lower cost. Yeah. That's the cloud innovation from Amazon's perspective. Be disruptive, but, but innovative. What's your comments on that? Thoughts? Do you agree? I, I think Any that's right. Any additional uh, color you could add to what that's all about and impact the customers? I, you know, I, I think overall that's correct. The, um, the history of IT is we keep having to make it simpler and simpler to do bigger and bigger things. And um, the way Andy's going about enabling big things to be done at lower capital expenses, you know, lower upfront costs, I mean, like the guys talked about his keynote, that's accurate. The, as you get into scale, you see consumption models and capital models start to become not as obvious on the cost point, to be honest, in my, what I see going on. So, I think you're going to see a lot more hybrid than Andy talks about sometimes. And, and, but the truth of the matter is, I don't think any of us know for sure where it's going. And we'll see, you know, Ultimately, economics and innovation drive our, this is why I keep, I love high tech. And, um, and you know, we'll see where, the, where things land. NetApp's been kind of quiet lately, so I want to get your take on this. NetApp um, has always been an innovator in the Valley. I mean, since they were fun founded, um, yeah, just man, a great, great culture. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of stuff going on around in your world, right? Yeah. Storage is changing, draft boom, the EMC shifting, you got Pure with the flash, all flash arrays, this, that, but it's like so many moving parts. Um, yeah. What's NetApp doing now? What are you guys up to? I mean, is there a quiet calm before the storm? I mean, I, I sense there's like almost like the stealth bomber run that's going to come out of the, the low level clouds and drop some NetApp uh, newness coming out. What's going on? Anything? What's, what's yeah, you know, I, I mean, it's out there. I, I think a little bit of it's a buzz factor, but the in the storage business, so I've been talking a lot of what I think is the cloud business. In the storage business, the big change is disks are going away steadily. You know, in, in our business, metaphorically speaking, stuff, metaphorically speaking yeah. stuff goes away for like Declining market. a long time. And flash is coming in, right? And flash wins on, and infrastructure is an economics game to a certain extent. Flash wins on dollars per IOP, but loses on capacity cost per yeah. capacity, disks still win on capacity. Yeah. And we're seeing now fragmentation of that market where disks are going slower. They're like becoming 33 RPM records, if nobody will remember those, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, they're going slower and we slower, do. but they're, yeah, okay, so <laughs> anyway. You guys garage. know what I mean. Yeah. 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 And, and, and Flash Dusty. is taking over more and more. And, you know, I, I like your question about innovators dilemma. I follow the innovators dilemma very closely. Adopting new technology changes like that within our own system is not a hard thing to do. So we have, I think, we have three different flash products right now that are in different parts of the flash market. The one that we're really excited about right now, we have a thing we call All Flash FAS, which is a pure flash system sitting under ONTAP in a complete ONTAP secure multi-tenant environment which can be moved and shifted to the cloud and all kinds of stuff that a pure could never contemplate doing. And that's all available today on just the storage market. Then you have the whole software defined conversation going on, which I think is very interesting and very important. It seems to have been downplayed in the, in the investor community of storage to me, but it's being missed. Software defined, we have cloud on tap sitting on Amazon. We have a product called ONTAP Edge, which runs on VMware. We continue to extend our software to find family. Object storage, we have a very competitive object store product. And what again, what I think the overall, the, one of the challenges we have is we're not a one product company anymore. We have to put this wrapper on top of it and explain to people what we're trying to do overall, which is what we, we call the NetApp data fabric. So talk about the challenges in um, for you customers. Let's go back to the customers. I always like to go back to the customers. What are you guys telling your customers right now? I'm a customer, Phil, tell me. Hey, what's going on with NetApp? I got a lot of challenges. I got many rooms that are on fire. I, I got to buy more and more storage. I got to write some checks. Um, what do I do? What, what are you guys up to? What do I, tell me, what's the NetApp 
thing and story, what, what should I be doing? All right, so you're going to love this answer. <laughs> the, uh, so I like to do triathlons, okay? And when things get difficult in a triathlon, there's a rule, and it's quiet your mind. So you try to get calm and focused, because everything's going crazy. You're hurting, things are bad, quiet your mind, usually stuff passes. So we tell our customers, point one is, if you're looking where this is going, everybody is going to use more cloud services, you're going to use more SaaS, sometimes those are the same thing, but you're going to use more <laughs> SaaS, and you better be uh, virtualizing and automating your on-premise world. And I'd say that describes essentially virtually 100% of the customer base. Yeah. To do that, you need to pick a vendor. Data is a very central piece of this. Pick a vendor who's going to give you the choices you want, is what we say. And then, and I really believe that NetApp is in this extremely differentiated position because we're the only guys who've gone and said, data's what it's about, we're going to work on the cloud, we're going to be very aggressive on this. And then we tell customers, let's just look at our projects. And you know, frequently that's a modernization on-prem right now. Sometimes it's a, we have hundreds of customers now attaching directly to Amazon with storage they put in like an Equinix Colo. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it depends on the project at that point. All right, so I'm a customer. I have three challenges. I want you to help me balance them out and, and tell me um, what, how, how to solve the problem, how to quiet my mind, if you will, and what you guys <laughs> are doing to address. Because you mentioned ONTAP. Yeah. Man, you guys have done a lot of stuff on, across the board, management, whatever. So three things. Application agility. Okay, I need that right now. I need management automation like yesterday, and I need a utility usage model. Yep. So that's my cloud uh, three-legged stool. Yep. What's, what's the balance there? 50-50, uh, 25, 25, I, 25. Of what you do? I mean, you should probably be chasing all those at once right now. Application agility, that actually becomes an interesting conversation of on-prem and off-prem too. Yeah. But, I mean, we've engineered our systems for a long time to be incredibly quick at doing uh, virtual cloning and things like that that help with, with application agility. Capital spending's an interesting, or how to shift the, the capital piece is an interesting one because the way our business model is, basically that you can buy our gear through service providers in all kinds of different capital purchasing, but that becomes more of a which partner are you using part of our strategy, primarily. And I, shoot, I'm sorry, John, I forgot the third part of your, the third um, leg you used uh, uh, Utility usage model, management automation. Oh, management automation, and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a big part of it. It's on, a big part on of it. command, right? On command, big part Well, we have a lot of tools, but um, we have an on command suite of management tools, but that suite's focused on, on giving you control of data, yeah. okay? And then the next step of, though, of what most people are trying to do is automation up through the network and the, yeah. and the compute tier. And at that tier is where we're, we do a lot of work with VMware. We do a lot of work yeah. with like Windows uh, Server actually. And then uh, the most, the thing that's the hottest is work on OpenStack yeah. at the moment. And so a lot of plugins and a lot of how we make OpenStack easy to use with yeah. our equipment is a huge topic in that. You mentioned virtualization. I was going to get there. You we got to we got to connect to the dots. The next question. Because here, you, I can get sucked into the intoxication of the Kool-Aid injection from Andy Jassy. He's awesome, love Andy. Andy, <laughs> you're great, we're a big fan, of course. Um, but virtualization is, is present in the enterprise, heavily. And it's been a big part of a lot of the innovation. That's a big part of this, the piece here we're talking about in storage and cloud is virtualization. Where's that playing into the dynamics? Because you know, you're not well, hearing a lot of virtualization. Is that commoditized now? I mean, yeah, it, what, what's the take on where virtualization fits in all this? It's critical. Um, the way I think of it, I, it's actually the, the way I got my job at NetApp is I start at NetApp, I always work on where our storage talks to these servers. And so in the pre-virtualization days, I worked on Linux grid computing. If nobody, I don't yeah. even know anybody, that's like my 33 yeah. RPM LP story. But <laughs> Linux grids, we were operating at like the 20, I mean a, a scaled up, NetApp customer in Linux grid world had 20,000 servers attached to our equipment. And so we were kind of working in those types of scales. When virtualization came in, it was a real natural fit for us. That was my next job. And we spent a lot of time taking, going to like the 50,000, 100,000 server attached. So it's a scale thing. And 
that's really the underlying technology that lets you move to the cloud because it's so much easier if you're containerized like that. It's so much easier to use yeah. cloud computing for software-defined storage. Virtual the whole thing, is all of that is all wrapped. If you kind of think about it, the technology underpinnings of the cloud are a lot of virtualization at the store at the various layers of the infrastructure, and then the the uh, business model, the the consumption business model is a radical change. And but but virtualization. What happened in our customer base was over, say, probably until about two or three years ago, people were bringing, bringing, bringing in virtualization. Most people will tell you now they're about 80% virtualized, if you ask them. And 80%, the reason it's not 100 is because there's always this sort of tail that's not very friendly to virtualization. So now the conversation shifted to, I've got myself virtualized on-prem, how do I automate? The question you asked earlier, automate and orchestrate is a big topic. And then, some people are saying, and how do I use the cloud? Those are the two threads that are going on all the time. And I'm working with my customers to go both ways because I think they're both very yeah. important trends. I mean, yeah, we got to get the, the hook here. I wish we had more, some more time because I'd like to drill down. Great great to have your insights here. And you know, one of the things that we've been saying on theCUBE uh, um, is there's an interesting um, world going on right now. You got your nimble, agile workload, cloud with like yeah. an Amazon on one end of the spectrum. Then you actually have your hardcore engineered system. So like, there is an engineering discussion that needs to be had totally. around the, the workload pieces. You can't just slap some cloud at it. People, so, I mean, basic stuff like, how, yeah, it, it's I mean, so Oracle's true. Oracle's engineered systems, and we were poo-pooing that, but yeah, sales are up. I mean, people just want functionality. That's they don't want lock-in. They, no, they want, want choice. I but mean, they we want, invented. You know us, John. We we invented the appliance market because of this. Yeah, people, <laughs> network it, appliance. People. People want to buy stuff and make it easy. Yeah. And, and so, the con if you will, appliances or converged infrastructure, whatever you like to call it, it's not going to go away because yeah. convenience is good. <laughs> yeah, and we moved from uh, Hadoop, HBase, on our CrowdChat platform to Amazon, mainly because I want that, the cloud appliance, if you will. I didn't want to hire all these people to manage the One. Hadoop cluster. I go to Amazon, I got full stack developers provisioning infrastructure. Just, just for an interesting. I love that. And I, I know you guys got to wrap up, but an interesting thing is, so we did, we invented FlexPods with Cisco a number of years ago. we you can now launch a soft FlexPod, something we're showing today. You can launch a soft FlexPod out of test drive in 40 minutes. And so the exact concepts that we're doing yeah. in on-prem, we're replicating on the cloud. It's going to, it's super cool. Same wine, different bottle. Right, is that old expression? Yeah, I guess you know gone, I've right. heard that. In, say, or champagne, if you're like, uh, right. I if think you're SAP. That's where I got the quote from. <laughs> it's, uh, it's one. It's not the only thing that's going on, but it's an interesting part of the story. Phil, thanks so much for sharing. VP of Cloud Solutions, Phil Brotherton. I see an engineering background brings the perspective here inside the cube here at Amazon Web Services Summit. It's the cube. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>